Hi, my name is Jennifer Wallace and I am a physical therapist and owner of Duchenne Therapy Network. This is the second in a series of video blogs put out by Duchenne Therapy Network and sponsored by Cure Duchenne. The title of this series is Physical Therapy Tips and Tricks for Those with Duchenne Muscular Dystrophy. The first video was an overall view of essential stretching for those who have Duchenne to help increase their flexibility throughout their lifetime. This one goes into a little bit more of a concentrated area on ankle mobility, which is a primary area of concern for those with Duchenne. Daily stretching is our most common and most effective way of maintaining range of motion for somebody who has the tendency to become more tight. Stretches should be done daily for someone who has Duchenne muscular dystrophy. At least four to six times per week is recommended and that's the way it's written in the guidelines for those with Duchenne. Now even with the most diligent home program with daily stretching occurring every night for the Achilles, the gastroc, and sometimes the soleus muscle, the ankles may still continue to become a little bit more tight or one more tight than the other. And a very common recommendation is to do night splinting. This is called an ankle foot orthotic, an AFO. You may also hear it referred to as an ankle splint or a night splint. These are extremely common and actually recommended by the guidelines for treatment of those with Duchenne. These are recommended to be worn nightly, at least six hours a night. All night would be okay, but at least six hours a night to help affect the angle of the ankle. What this is, this brand is called DAFO, D-A-F-O. It is made by Cascade. It's a very common model to use and it's very successful as well. This offers an upper cuff. This goes around the calf and gently put that on. It doesn't have to be tight. This is the important strap here. This is the instep strap. I'm going to take it off to show you the brace and then I'll show you how to put it on. This is just the forefoot strap. It opens here. Notice it has plastic that encompasses the whole foot. This is a good thing. This holds the foot where it needs to be all night long so the foot doesn't slide off to one side or the other if this plastic weren't there. And believe me, I've seen it in other braces. So with this coming around the foot, it holds the foot where it needs to be. And then you open it up gently like this. Pretty easy. Slide the foot in. Close it up. Again, this instep strap is very important. Once the foot is in, you have the heel all the way down. You just slide it through the buckle here and pull it tilt snug. You don't want it really tight. Snug is good and then bring it down. You want the heel all the way in. In most of them you can ask to have extra holes drilled through the plastic to allow the foot to breathe a little more. Another important feature of this is that there's been a bottom treatment put on it for non-slip. We don't really want our boys and young men walking around in these. They're not going to do anything except for try the muscles of the knees and the hips anymore. So, sleeping all night, sometimes they have to get up to go to the bathroom at night. So you put the bottom treatment on just for that trip to the bathroom and back to keep them safe. Otherwise, these are night splints and not to be worn during the day. The caveat to that is those who are non-ambulatory may choose to wear this during the day instead. If they're in their wheelchair and this is more comfortable to be worn during the day, that's absolutely fine. Then they can rest easier at night and not have these. Introducing these to the boys is sometimes tough, but it's very doable and you just have to approach it in a way that works for them. Maybe start out during the day so they understand what it is and then move it to nighttime use. Maybe start out, you're going to have a pair of these. Maybe start out with one, one night, the other the next night, and just do every other foot until they're used to them and then have them wear both all night, at least six hours a night. Sometimes the stretching programs aren't always effective. Maybe they were delayed in starting and there were already a bit of contractures. Maybe the schedule didn't permit or your child wasn't as cooperative with the stretching program. Whatever it may be, sometimes ankle contractures still do happen. And the next step into the more aggressive treatment of ankle contractures is called serial casting. What a serial cast is, it looks like a cast that you would see on somebody who broke their ankle. It's the same thing, it can be on one or both. And what happens is you do a casting one week at the maximum comfortable ankle dorsiflexion angle and it stays there for either three days to a week depending on what your center is doing. 
After that time, that cast is removed and a new cast is put on at the new comfortable range of motion, which is hopefully an increase of three to five degrees each time this is done. This can be done three or four times during the serial casting process, so it could last three to four weeks. This is a good set of serial casting where the bottoms of them were made absolutely flat so this young man could still ambulate while he had these on, which is extremely important. We don't want any of the boys who are ambulatory who go through serial casting to become weak because they were resting during serial casting. So these have a flat bottom, they have a significant amount of um, the cast cut back by the toes to allow for air circulation. Last but not least, if the ankle contractures are the primary reason that somebody is still having difficulty standing or walking, or even somebody who's non-ambulatory can't get their feet flat under them to do a stander or to help with transfers or something along those lines, orthopedic surgery can be considered. And you should be referred to an orthopedic surgeon for a consult at that time. And usually that's after all other means have failed. So I do hope this was helpful. We have a series of videos coming out all year long. A couple of the topics coming up next is a fun summertime activity, so we'll have one about swimming, which is extremely beneficial for our guys who have Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And there'll be another one coming up real soon regarding wheelchairs, power wheelchairs, and management of all of those with one of our experts in the field. So stay tuned, there's a lot coming up. Please feel free to post any questions or send them my way and we can make a whole video based just on what it is that you need to know. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye.